want to uh, welcome you all to uh, the rotunda inside city's, uh, City Hall, the People's Building here in the City of Champions. Uh, before we start, um, John Drzezinskis was just a wonderful friend of mine. Having Cheryl Lee and a lot of the people here today worked uh, tirelessly to make sure that the Lithuanian flag celebration always went off without a hitch. So we lost John this year, unfortunately. If we could take a moment of silence, remember John and his loved ones. May he rest in peace. I'd like to uh, first uh, welcome you, as I said, all here today. This is a really exciting day. Um, the city of Brockton has always been made up of diversity, right? That's what makes Brockton so special. And the Lithuanian citizens and residents and business owners of the city of Brockton have really been just an unbelievable piece of that fabric known as the city of Brockton. So today's a great day. I want to I want to thank all the elected officials I know of. Plymouth County DA Tim Cruz is here. Thank you for being here, Mr. DA. I know Senator Michael Brady is here. Thank you, Senator. I know City Councilor from Ward 6, Jack Lally is here. Councilor, thank you for being here. I'm sure there'll be a few others en route. Um, I also want to uh, ask Marita Vizinkowskis to please come. city employees here, department heads and employees. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us. I also want to just take a, uh, a public uh, thank you on behalf of everybody for the yeoman's work you do each and every day to better the city of Brockton. So Lithuanian Independence Day, again, uh, Lithuania proclaimed independence in the year 1918. And I'm really honored and privileged to be here before you today as we celebrate 105 years of Lithuanian independence. Again, Lithuania is located in northeastern Europe on the east coast of the Baltic Sea. Lithuanian people are among the most resilient people in world history. Even after proclaiming its independence in the year 1918, Lithuanians dealt with the occupation of Nazi Germany from 1941 through 1944, where Lithuanians suffered greatly but also performed truly great acts of heroism. Thousands of Lithuanian families risked their own lives to protect Lithuanian Jews from the Holocaust. Still, the Nazis did kill over 100,000 Lithuanian Jews, along with Lithuanian activists, soldiers, and civilians. After the Nazis were finally uh, kicked out, the Russian Soviet Union moved back in and they took control of Lithuania from the year 1945 to 1991. In 1991, after two years of contention with Soviet authorities, Lithuania proudly declared its independence for the second time. Lithuanians here in the city of Brockton, a lot of us that grew up in the city of Brockton knew that the village section of the city uh, housed a lot of Lithuanian businesses and wonderful Lithuanian residents. Coming in the latter part of the 19th century, uh, witnessed here in the city of Brockton a great influx of wonderful Lithuanians, and this was due to various 
socioeconomic and political factors, including a lack of available land for the rapidly increasing Lithuanian population. Also, the ban on teaching of Lithuanian language and flight from the Russian army and the famine, in, and again, in, in early 1860s. As everyone knows here, again, Brockton has historically played a large role to the Lithuanian dis diaspora. Lithuanians began settling Brockton here in the city, working the shoe industries, again, in the late 1800s. Catholic parish known as St. Rocco's, established in 1898 on Webster Street uh, by Lithuanian immigrants. St. Casimir's Church on Sawtell Ave was built in 1952. Lithuanian village, again, developed around that, that wonderful Catholic church. As a, a, a proud Roman Catholic, I want to say thank you. It was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to be able to visit it. I went to a lady of but I was able to, uh, to visit Casimir's on a regular basis. Over the decades, a lot of social clubs uh, created within the village and cultural celebrations were held in the parish hall and at Removal Park, which really helped the community as a whole, not just the Lithuanians, the city as a whole, the wonderful diversity here in the city of Brockton. Lithuanian businesses included bakeries and shops and restaurants and, and pharmacies, and there were just so many wonderful, wonderful businesses here. Uh, Kilka's Bakery, um, uh, the Yakovonis, I might not have said that, I'm an Irish guy, Yakovonis, I say that all right? Funeral home, but the community events held at Removal Park, including sports and dancing. Hundreds and hundreds of Lithuanians from all around Massachusetts and Rhode Island would come up here and just celebrate feast days, and festivities, and family, and it was awesome. So again, I'm here today to just say how wonderful uh, it is to be able to celebrate all the diversity. Today, of course, is a special day to recognize and publicly thank the Lithuanian people that, again, make up Brockton. Uh, without the Lithuanians, Brockton would not have that wonderful feel of diversity, inclusion, and wonderfulness. So again, I'm here today to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm also here to uh, recognize the elected officials. At this time, I would ask uh, Senator Mike Brady if you'd like to come to the podium and say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Let's give Marita another round of applause, a wonderful rendition of our national anthem. And if we can do another moment of silence, we just lost another wonderful woman from the community of the Lithuanian village. She was a guidance counselor at the Brockton School System for many years, Sylvia Kusakaitis. And if uh, she just passed away, they had the service at Wade's Funeral Home just recently this week. So yeah, if we could. Was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. So if we can just have a moment of silence for her as well, please. Thank you. And uh, I'm just honored to be here representing the Senate. Our House of Representatives members are in the State House doing business today. We did some business yesterday in the State House and they send their best wishes as well. But I'm just honored to be a part of the community and honored to represent a great community in the Lithuanian village and across the part of the region that I represent. And God bless you all and God bless the United States of America. I also want to recognize a, a great city councilor, Shirley Azak from Ward 7. Thank you for being here, councilor. <laughs> city clerk, Tim Cruz, former councilor from Ward 1. Thank you. The council president, um, Susan Acasper from Ward 4, is feeling a little bit under the weather today, but she called me before this event and just wanted to pass on her well wishes and her thanks as well. Um, DA Cruz, would you like to say a few words at this time? Uh, thanks so much, Mr. Mayor, and I just want to say how much I appreciate the City of Brockton continually doing all the flag raising. I think it's really important for the community, and it's great with the Lithuania Village. I grew up in the next town over. We used to go to Lith Village. We were young kids uh, and uh, have uh, good, good restaurants, good foods, good times. So I really appreciate the Lithuania Village and the people that grew up here in the City of Brockton, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come here today. So everybody have a great day, and enjoy the flag raising. So I'd like to read an official proclamation, uh, and I'm going to actually present it uh, to Marita, who can give it to her mom. Her mom's here today. Is it 97 years? 92 today. 92 years young. <laughs> official proclamation, whereas, this is 52-year-old eyes, I'm sorry about this. 
The many achievements and contributions of Lithuanian immigrants and their descendants living abroad and throughout the United States deserve to be celebrated and honored. Whereas in 1918, Lithuania declared independence from the German Empire. And whereas Lithuanians behaved heroically in the face of the Nazi atrocities. And whereas Lithuanian finally freed itself from the Soviet Union in the year 1991. Whereas the Lithuanian village and its businesses, traditions, and culture are an important part of Brockton's history. Whereas the vibrant culture of Lithuanian people will always be celebrated and honored in our fine city of champions. Now therefore, I, Robert F. Sullivan, as mayor of the city of Brockton, hereby proudly proclaim February 16th in the year 2023 the city of Brockton as Lithuanian Independence Day. And I respectfully urge all residents and business owners in our fine city to please join me in celebrating this wonderful, wonderful day. And I proudly sign and seal it today as the mayor of the city of Brockton. And I'd like to give it to Mrs. Uh, Bizanovskaya. So at this time we are going to uh, we're going to hear the national anthem of Lithuania, uh, and we are going to proudly hoist the flag at this time. Great. I hope you all hoist it. Mom, do you want to stand next to the mayor when he raises the flag? Come on, Veronica. There you go. And uh, for those who may be curious, these are the words to the Lithuanian national anthem. Right here. So if you want to read along in Lithuania, you're welcome. <laughs> I'll show you. So this one here, if you pull, pull this one here, you pull it, just pull it down. We need that beautiful voice here every time we do a flag raising. <laughs> Usually, we speak about Lithuania and different events in the Lithuanian community. But uh, today, I wanted to have some of my rocks, again, about the Lithuanian community, but about a Lithuanian in particular. Um, John L. Dudzinskas was a lifelong resident of Brockton, and uh, he passed away on November 26, 2022. Uh, he was born here, and he was the son of Louis Dudzinskas and Elizabeth Augis. John was passionate about his Lithuanian roots and participated enthusiastically in all Lithuanian-related events throughout his life. He attended St. Casimir School, yes, the Little Red Schoolhouse with the double grades situated next to the church on Aim Street. And that Little Red Schoolhouse still stands and was built with wood reclaimed from the dismantling of the old St. Rocco's Rectory. Yeah. He was a very active member of the Knights of Lithuania and held the position of Vice President and Financial Secretary for Council One. 
and he was also vice president of the Knights of Lithuania New England District. He also attended many, many Knights of Lithuania national conventions and participated in any way he could. His father, Louis, whose name was probably Laulnas, uh, was an immigrant from Lithuania, helped foster John's love for his ancestral home. He loved his Catholic faith as much as his Lithuanian roots, and tirelessly helped the Sisters of Jesus Crucified in any way possible. As a youth, he worked at the Labor Day picnics, which I'm sure some of you still remember, and which were historical and the highlight event of hundreds of people who would flock to the convent for some delicious kugelis, kielbasa, and sauerkraut dinners. The ladies of the various Lithuanian parishes, and there were about 12, I think, throughout the archdiocese, would vie to see which table would raise the most money to help the sisters in their mission here in Brockton and in Scranton, Pennsylvania. I must admit the ladies of St. Peter's Church, with their table of delicious sweets, usually uh, won the contest. In later years, John helped in other fundraising activities for the convent and participated on boards to support their nursing home, St. Joseph's Manor. With the closure of St. Casima Church by the Archdiocese of Boston, John became an active member of St. Michael Parish in Avon. He was a regular lector, a fundraiser, and helped organize the Lithuanian Heritage Day celebrations at the parish in Avon. He was also a fourth degree Knight of Columbus and a faithful navigator, and was proud to wear his uniform at many formal masses in which the Knights of Columbus participated. He was a dedicated and active member of the Brockton community and was heavily involved in city politics and campaigning. John volunteered for many organizations, including the VFW Auxiliary Post 1046, where he was senior vice president. He advocated for the city tirelessly and will always be fondly remembered and deeply respected. John, you will be missed here on earth, but we are certain you'll be welcomed joyfully into your eternal home in heaven. So those are my remarks regarding John. Oh my. Whoops. <laughs> Thank you. And I would just like to spend a, a moment um, just bringing your attention to some of the things we have here. Um, Lithuania has often been called the land of Mary. And for several reasons. A, Lithuania was the last country in Europe to take on Catholicism. So that was about 1485. They finally became a Catholic nation. Um, they did have one king of Lithuania baptized in 1236. So that was King Mindoga. So his family were, was baptized, and that made Lithuania an official country because they got a crown from the Pope. But after that, they continued practicing their native religion, which was called Romova. Uh, well, part of why Lithuania is called um, the land of Mary is that in 1608, there was an apparition on the town of Shilova. And the Catholic Church recognizes four uh, apparitions of the Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Guadalupe, Our Lady of Shilova, Our Lady of Fatima, and Our Lady of Lourdes. And those are four that have been for, by the Catholic Church as true um, apparitions of the Blessed Mother. And so this little picture kind of tells a story about Our Lady of, of um, Shilova. And um, there was a church there, and the Calvinists had come into that part of Lithuania and had taken down the church. But before they did, the priest hid all of the vestments and everything under a tree. Well, years later, about 100 years later, there was a woman standing on a rock crying, and the children asked, why are, why are you crying? What is this? And she said, you uh, feed your, you know, your animals here and you plow the fields, but my son was once worshipped here. And somehow or another they found the last surviving person uh, who was able to show them where those things were buried. They opened a, a, uh, the trunk and all of the vestments and a beautiful picture of Our Lady of Shilova was there. So this is a 
a depiction of that apparition with the children, but the other, Our Lady of Shilava, she's uh, with a crown and holding a baby Jesus, and that's considered the miraculous picture. So that's hanging uh, in Lithuania. But as a result, we have a lot of different Blessed Mothers. So that's Our Lady of Auschwitz Varto Maria, Our Lady of the Dawn Gates. And then we have our Lithuanian coat of arms, which is the Vitis, the Knight, right? And we have a lot of, we have over here on this end, we have the pensive Christ. And it was always thought that Christ was always worried about his poor people in Lithuania. So he would sit and worry and worry and worry about them and how to take care of them. So um, that's Rupin Toyenis, the warrior. So he's one of our, um, he's very important to the Lithuanian people as well. And as you can see, there's all sorts of weavings and uh, wood carvings and other things. So I would like you to take a moment to look. And I had a number of these prayer cards made, and it says, Prayer to Our Lady of Shilava in the back if you like one. And Our Lady of Shilava is considered the patron saint of fallen away Catholics. So if you need to pray for your family, I would suggest some family member. She was, she's the one to ask. And I just want to share one more thing if you don't mind. I got a few family members I can pray, so I'll be using this card. Thank you. And I just want to show you this, and from St. Casimir's Church, so I don't know if you, right, if you can see it. So when, uh, when they closed down the church, uh, Father John was clever enough to have some of these beautiful stained glass windows uh, taken from the church, and he wrapped them up, and he handed them out to the parishioners. So there you go. So I just wanted to share that with you. So that's one of our things. And Shrenta Petronella would probably be like Patricia. Would probably be what you would say. So I have plenty of these cards, and um, you're welcome. And this is one thank for you, you and your you family. Thank you. And thank you all for the opportunity to be here with you. So again, I just want to thank everybody for being here today. I, I want to thank our special guest, the birthday girl as well, for being here. Thank you. Again, we will continue to showcase all the diversity in the city of Brockton. Uh, we'll be having another flag raising and a ceremony in the near future. But today, it's all about Lithuania and the wonderful people that have come here in the city of Brockton. God bless you all. Have a great day. God bless the city and the Commonwealth and the country.